everybody. My name is Luke Warren. and this is Hot La Mode. And today on Hot La Mode, we are coming to you with a part two of our Oscars after party fashion roast and review. We got a lot to discuss. We're going through the rest of the looks. We had a part one video. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But this is part two. We're going to be talking about everybody from Kate Hudson all the way to Zoe Saldana. Be prepared. Now listen, am I wearing glasses? Absolutely, because I'm getting eye surgery tomorrow and I'm not supposed to wear contacts, but I did. So without further ado, Let's get into this part two. First up, we have Kate Hudson, who is wearing this vibrant pink Tamara Ralph gown. It has a low plunging neckline. It's in a mermaid cut with a long sort of flowing train. And it has some sort of fabric ruffle. They almost look like petals, like fabric petals that are jutting out of the off the shoulder sleeve element. Although there's actually an off the shoulder sleeve element and a on the shoulder sleeve element. I like the dress from the off the shoulder side part. The not off the shoulder side part, it could be okay, but I think that the asymmetry of the two is weird. It looks wonky, it looks a little bit strange, it looks a little bit like top heavy, but it's really side heavy. And I think that it just throws off what otherwise is a really you know nice, easy, clean dress. There's a subtle little detail in these sort of fabric petals. For some reason we had to have one pom-pom be bigger than the other pom-pom. I don't get why, because I just think it throws off the look. The fit's good. The composition needs some work. Next up we have Kendall Jenner who is wearing an archival Jean-Paul Gaultier haute couture look. It is a strap tank top fitted gown with a sort of mermaid skirt. It's made up of a motif of gold fish scales and what look like fabric flower motif. So it looks like there's almost two roses at her breast area covering the breast. Then those sort of fish scales run down. Larger sort of fish scales make themselves known on the sort of hip area while the smaller sort of fish scales continue to run down the front. And as we hit the knee area, fish scale sort of motif becomes bigger and bigger as it hits the floor and comes to the hem moment. And what I do like is if we look closely at the hem, you can actually see that those fish scales sort of flap over top of the actual hem of the dress, which I think is nice because it just adds a little bit more of detail, a little bit more of fantasy. That's kind of the stuff that you expect from haute couture. I like the fit of it. I think the motif is interesting enough. It's not really super duper memorable or super duper exciting, but respectfully, it's Kendall Jenner. Those are not synonyms for her, in my personal opinion. Rah, rah for an archival JPG moment, but blah, blah in terms of archival JPG moments that we've chosen. You know what I mean? Like, I just think there could have been something a little bit more exciting and fun and over the top and funky. This is just kind of there. And I really say that because it's Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's a brand that's about the avant-garde, the over-the-top excitement, intrigue, sexual seduction, playing on house codes and trying and rebelling. And this is the dress that we chose. Next up we have Carrie Washington who is wearing a vintage Donna Karen look. Now listen, Donna Karen is an American sportswear designer. Came up in the same sort of echelons of Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger. Donna put together like the seven piece wardrobe, she dressed the working woman, like she very much so an iconic American designer. Now this look is pretty much a draped spaghetti strap floor length gown. It has a high slit and then in the middle there's this drapery that it's rough to look at from the front. It's less rough to look at from a zoomed out perspective. Now this is a look that is actually from La Roche's very iconic archive. Somebody that also does collect vintage and archival sort of garments. You know, it's nice to see Law sort of pull those styles out and it's also why if Law actually is retiring from celebrity styling, I will be very sad because you don't really get stylists that are like, oh, let me pull from my archive. That's not normal. That's not seen that often. So to get to see moments like that, it's really like a special thing. So the dress, in reality, I think it fits well. It's draped and sort of pulled in right at the waist area, so it moves sort of slowly in, and then as we move out, it tapers back out again as we reach the sort of hip area. Listen, is it the most amazing, memorable, wonderful dress? No, but is it a Donna Karen sort of style that you don't really see a lot of, and so is that something of interest and intrigue? Sure. Do I think that the color works in her? Sure. Do I think the fit of it is good? Sure. Do I really think it's super duper memorable? No. But it's a brand and a designer that is American based. American designers are usually very commercial. It's not super avant-garde. It's not super over the top. It's simple and, and plain usually. So for what it is, I'm okay with it. Next up we have Kylie Jenner wearing Maison Martin Marcella. Again, I just feel like the Jenner sisters 
blah, I don't really understand why, so blah this year. This dress is pretty much a strapless gown. It's in what looks like a sort of reflective ray. There's a big bow on the front and a long train that flows right out from the back of the dress. As soon as the strapless element starts at the back, that's where that train flows out of. The dress fits Kylie well, of course. I mean, that waist seam I just think is kind of unsightly. It just throws off, you know, the rest of the dress. It's just blah. There's nothing really to it. There's nothing really exciting about it. It's just Kylie wearing a dress. Kylie overshadows the dress because there's not much of the dress to really present itself in a super exciting or memorable light. My issue is like Margiela as a brand is very iconic, deconstruction, reconstruction, all those beautiful sort of things. John Galliano, very controversial figure within the fashion industry and understandable as to why, but like if you're gonna go that route because you decided to pick Margiela by John Galliano, why wouldn't you get Galliano to at least do something that was exciting and memorable and intriguing and really sort of out there. Like if you're gonna do, oh, let's court controversy, at least make the look memorable, but this is kind of like, mm -hmm. Next up we have Laura Harrier wearing Saint Laurent. This is an off the shoulder little sheer mesh dress. It's strapless. There's not really much underneath. We can see full sort of bosom going on. And there seems to be a faux fur. I don't think it's like a wrap. I think it's just part of the dress. I think that the beginning of the sleeve actually sort of is this faux fur in black. It's usually very simple when it comes to Anthony Vaccarella, so I understand it. It's not really exciting. Next up we have Lily James in Versace. This is a strapless pink fitted gown. It has a mermaid cut as well. Out from the actual neckline we have these long pink dense feathers that jut out. Blah. Like the whole look is just kind of blah. Listen, does it fit well? Does it look good? Sure, absolutely. I'm here with you. I agree with you. That's great. We can say that and then we can move on. The feathers I think are nice. They don't hinder it. They don't hurt it. That's good. Is it really exciting? Is it really memorable? Is it something that we really want to sit here and talk about for long periods of time? No. And I think that's my issue with the last however many looks that we've seen. There's not really anything to discuss. It's pretty women in pretty looking dresses. Okay, great. Thank you. Next up we have Lori Harvey who's wearing Stefan Roland and this is a gold sort of hooded jacket and a pair of wide leg what look like silk pants. I thought they were maybe linen at first but they're definitely silk. Claps to Lori Harvey always because she always attempts something. She always tries. She always wants to do something a little bit different, a little bit weird, a little bit strange and I appreciate it. And I think today honestly this works. I like this gold jacket. I think the fit of it it's okay. The rolled up sleeve is intriguing. The no shirt underneath with a sort of plunge neckline detail is fine. And then I just love the way that the gold sort of, you know, shrouds over top of her head. I think it looks really lovely. I think the choice of the necklace, it works. It's it's a plunging sort of neckline. So you're going to bring something that's going to move sort of down. I think it, it's cool. The belting, it's a jacket. I'm fine with it. I do think it really nips in the waist. And then the fact that below the actual belt, the jacket sort of flows out too. And then I think the pants, fine. They could be a little bit better hemmed at the bottom, a little bit crunchy looking, but besides that, I appreciate at least an attempt to do something different. Do I think it's best fitted experience in the entire world? No. Do I think that we could, you know, still work on the finer details? Absolutely, but at least it's something intriguing. At least it's something to look at. It's something to break down. I appreciate that. Next up is Lucien Levis Count and he is wearing Dolce & Gabbana. Now listen, he's trying to attempt something, trying to be a little avant-garde. It looks awful. I appreciate trying something different. It's rough. Just think aesthetically, it's, it's ugly looking. I don't understand the big waistband thing. It doesn't make sense. Maybe it's meant to like shrink in the waist, which is fine, but I don't think aesthetically it looks good over this very sort of deep, what looks like a black velvet, or it's just, it's definitely a deeper black. I think it throws off the look. Had it been in the same sort of color, fabric and material, maybe, yeah, absolutely. Like it, it could have worked. It could have been like, oh, it's, it's, it's really sucking the body in in that area, but no. And then it seems like we tried to match the gloves to the waistband area, and I don't think that worked either. I think it's really awful and ugly. Then you add in the necklace. It's just, it's it's a hot, it's a real hot goddamn mess. So, Lucien, let's keep doing the avant element. Let's just clean it up for my sake. Next up, we have Malala Yousafzai, and she is wearing a Jill Sander custom look. We don't really see a lot of Jill Sander on the carpet. Luke and Lucy Meyer, 
they more so just make very nice expensive clothing and, and they call it a day. But we have this silk sort of creamy little look. It has a big sort of hood over top. I'm sure that Malala is probably paying homage to Pakistan, which is where she's originally from, but she lives here in the United States now. And I think it's nice to sort of pay homage to her home. And also at the same time, I think the look is really nice. It's very sweet. It's very modern. I think the floor length element works. I do wish it was a little bit less sort of wrinkled exclusively in sort of the waist area. You can see little sort of lines and crinkles and wrinkles, but again, it's the silk, so it's gonna do that, but also steamer. Always helps with the steamer. So listen, I like the Malala's pulling out a nice Jill Sander moment, you know what I mean? Like you don't really get to see a lot of Jill Sander on the carpet ever, so I'm into it. And also it's custom, so like Malala has that pull, which we like, which we're into. Next up we have Manu Rios, and he is wearing Andamula Meester by Ludovic de Sensernin. This is a black jacket, black pant, and knee-high black leather boot, which I love that boot, it's a great boot. And then it has a, what I believe is a deconstructed shirt, a white shirt underneath and it's tied together in the middle but it still exposes the stomach area. Now when we're talking about the Hunter Schaefer look by Ludovic for Anne de Meester, we're talking about the exposure of the body and how you know a lot of people don't really like that but it seems to me like there is an equal opportunity to expose your top area if you're wearing Anne de Meester. I will not be wearing Anne de Meester because I am not going to be exposing my top area to anybody. I do appreciate the fact that, listen, there is this sort of continuity with Ludovic's work where body exposure, showing off the body, seeing skin is a part of his work and bringing it to Anne in what to me, listen, again, a very sort of minimal and Moulin understanding of fashion history, house codes, things like that. I think that a black suit is very and Moulin It reads very and Moulin It has that sort of dark sort of gothic -y sort of feel to it. And I think that Ludovic's doing a good job of trying to infuse his little, you know, DNA tidbits into the brand and still keeping somewhat of the brand DNA there. I love the boots. I think they're fantastic. I think they're super chic, super elegant. Shout out to Manu for going for it and serving a little look ski here. I think this is a fun way to take on the suit, very into it. I love the way that the white sort of shirt cuffs sort of flow out underneath the actual cuff of the blazer jacket. It's just, it's good, I'm into it. And for everybody that's gonna be like, you think Manu Rios is so hot. I'm not into twinks, okay? So keep that, shove it. Next up we have Marianne Cotillard and she is wearing Chanel. Now Chanel's really getting into these little cape moments going on, aren't they? Pretty much we can see that this is a, it's a reflective black jumpsuit. It seems to be woven in with some sort of white threads or silver threads that are sort of making it reflective and having that reflective element. There's a little bit of Chanel jewelry going on almost as like a faux tie, which I actually kind of like. I think the jewelry is good. I think it's smart. I think it works. I think the bejeweled buttons that run down the front on the placket and on the little pockets is also cool. You know, the peep toe shoe, I don't hate, I don't love, it's just there. But I do really love that cape. I love little flounce and ruffle at the shoulder area and then the way that it falls down, I think it's cool. The scallop sort of edge in this lace style too is nice, I think it's fun, I think it adds a little bit more of a feminine element to a little bit more of a professional feeling jumpsuit as we can see. And the bag, I'm fine with, I don't hate it, I don't love it, it's it's just there, you know, it's, it's rare you're gonna see like a Chanel quilted bag on the red carpet, so I'm into it. Next up we have Megan Fox wearing Miss Sohi. I love this. It's a strapless black dress with a beautiful sort of, I'm not gonna say it's a scalloped neckline because it's definitely not, but intriguing sort of indented neckline and a plunge that runs all the way down. We can see that there is a bit of netting that most definitely holds those two pieces of the bust area together. And listen, while it's a little bit obvious that it's, it's not the best match, from afar you can't really tell that it's not totally skin matched. I'm gonna let it slide. The fit of the actual dress is great. I love the way it falls down, has a mermaid sort of cut, and then also a little bit of a train. But the thing that's really of intrigue and interest is the very signature Miss So. He sort of like, I'm gonna call them embellished. They're almost like shells. They're, they're like fabric shells that have been incredibly encrusted with crystals and colors and sequins and all that sort of stuff. It sort of juts out from right above the bum area and then flows down almost like a secondary skirt or like an overlaid skirt. I love it. I think it's clean. I think it's minimal. I think it's chic. I think it's elegant. I think that it's full of handcraft and good quality fashion workmanship. And it just adds a nice sort of shelled aspect 
and appearance. I think Megan Fox looks radiant and wonderful and gorgeous here. I think she's chosen the right designer. Miss Sohi is fantastic. Those sort of like shell pieces are also very much so house codes. Usually we see them sort of in a head shape area. Usually they're almost like hoods or they cover different elements, but it's nice to see it sort of in a different place, a different placement. It gives it a little bit more of a rounded aspect and that it can be a part of different dresses and gowns and it can move and groove in different ways. I like this. Next up we have Megan the Stallion wearing designer Bach Mai. I believe this is from Bach's most recent collection fall 2023. It's a strapless mermaid gown. It is made up of a black silk that seems to be embossed or at least the way that the silk is. It creates these sort of curvaceous lines that run through. I'm pretty positive this most recent Bach collection was based on the ocean and the sea so that might be why we're seeing a sort of wave element. There was a real darkness to the presentation as well, which is why I think we're seeing this sort of dark black metallic -y sort of color. I like the exposed sort of corset here because it's not your normal exposed corset. I think the fact that you have a sort of fishnet lace over top is good. And then the fact that it's not just let's expose the corset and do nothing from it. It's almost as if the corset is sort of peeking out from underneath the actual dress. The fact that there's a little sort of fabric flap that is laying over it as well looks nice. I will say I don't love the seam that runs down the front. That's really like my one singular issue here. I just think it throws the dress off just a little bit. I do love that trumpet skirt though. I think it's radiant. It's bold. It's beautiful. It creates a gorgeous shape on Megan. I think she looks amazing. Again, this is a Law Roach styling, you know what I mean? I love to see it. I'm very happy with this Megan look. I have to say I think she looks nice. Next up we have Mia Goth wearing Miu Miu. This is a custom look. It's a sort of black, you know, low cut floor length gown. There's nothing really crazy going on with it. It's pretty much just a fitted slip sort of style. The straps are a little bit sort of turned, wrapped up, almost like you're wringing something out. So it's kind of like a rung strap, I would say. I understand that Mia Goth is, you know, has goth in her name. She does a lot of horror movies. I just wish that there was a little bit more excitement and intrigue coming here. I feel like she does wear a lot of just black dresses. And I think that's fine, but I think that I'm sure there's great elements to this dress that just don't really translate well over the photos, but it just feels a little bit flat, a little bit matte, a little bit blah. And I want more for Mia Goth and Miu Miu custom looks. Next up we have Michaela J. Rodriguez and she is wearing Versace. This is a full custom experience. I'm obsessed. Let me tell you how amazing this gathered and wired and hardware dress is. I mean, look at it from the top. It's using almost like sort of not bungee cord, but elastic string. It adds like a real sort of intriguing hardware element to it. It adds a real sort of ruggedness, a real sort of stringy, stretchy aspect to it. And then as we reach the bust area, it's a very, very tightly gathered chiffon, which is really beautiful. The color pink is amazing because it's really, really thorough and continuous throughout. The pink of the bungee, with the pink of the chiffon, they work really well together. And then the bungee sort of comes back in right at sort of the sternum area. It moves down towards the waist and then comes back in. And again, you have this layering of this pink chiffon that moves in and out and in and out and in and out. And it's really, it's exciting. It's ravishing. It adds this layered, well thought out aspect to it. It feels like something that Gianni Versace would have done at some point. It's not an archival reference. It's not inspired by anything I don't think particular, but it feels like something he would have done. And I think it's an amazing thing to see. The skirt is luscious and gorgeous. It has a nice, I believe, a little lettuce hem at the bottom. It curls just slightly. Like this is a fantastic dress. Michaela J. Rodriguez looks amazing. Very proud of her. Proud of Versace. Whew. Next up we have Michelle Yeoh and she is wearing Armani Privé. It's a strapless pink gown with black embroidered trim. The full dress is embroidered and it seems like the pink has different elements of like gray and cream and whites and silver sort of embroidered throughout it which is why it has a sort of intriguing color story here because it looks a little bit gray at certain times. It looks a little bit pink at certain times but you have that black sort of continuation of the trim that runs down across the top of the neckline and straight down the front all the way to the hem. There's a pleated sheer panel that sort of covers what otherwise would be a plunging sort of neckline and then this big large embroidered and embellished fabric flower right in the center. I don't love it. 
You know what I mean? Like, listen, I know that it's impeccably made. I mean, the amount of hours that must have gone into the embroidery and the embellishment of the dress. I commend the Armani team. I always do. I just think the actual design in terms of creativity is kind of blah. And if it's not blah, it's sort of ill-conceived, in my opinion. It just feels unmemorable, unexciting. I think that there are certain elements like the black flower in the middle and the pleated fabric at the bust line and the moving of the color from pink to gray to white to pink to gray to white. None of it really works together. None of it feels cohesive. None of it feels like it's really creating a, a symphony, a harmony. You know what I mean? It just feels like it's all different parts vying for attention and we're just gonna put them all together and it doesn't seem to work. Next up we have Miguel wearing Lou Dan. This is a black leather suit. It has matching gloves, a matching shirt underneath, big long pants, black boots. Listen, it's okay. I don't hate it, I don't love it. It's just a full leather suit. I appreciate the dedication to one singular textile, one singular fabric, but I want a little bit more intrigue and interest from Miguel because we've seen him in exciting little moments and I'd like something a little bit more exciting. This feels a little, it's okay, but it could be great, not just okay. Next up we have Naomi Campbell wearing Scaparelli. Now listen, this is a look for the most recent Scaparelli Haute Couture collection. It's pretty much a fitted pie-et dress. The bra area is made up of two different pieces that are pretty much the same. They're ridged little circles or ovals that seem to have what look like to me gold nipple rings. Intriguing, interesting. This is a look that I really didn't talk about when I was discussing the Scaparelli Haute Couture collection in a video that actually never came out but is close to being done. I couldn't figure out where this dress slotted into Dante's Inferno and the Nine Rings of Hell, unfortunately, because that's what the collection was based on. But I do think that this Empire line paillette dress that flows out in these sort of tiles is cool. They look like Tic Tacs that have been embellished onto each other. And I think that the fit of it is great considering the textile utilized. I think it would be hard in certain ways to really get those tiles to really fit super duper well. I will say that for the most part, it looks good. I like it. I think Naomi could have chosen a little bit more of an exciting look. You know what I mean? She's Naomi Campbell. I know she doesn't have to, but she could have. It would have been appreciated. Do you think that one glaring issue that we can see is it seems to be little pieces of the paillettes are sort of falling off or, or getting stuck on top of each other, which it's a tough thing. The paillettes kind of have a mind of their own, I would presume. So that's why you're seeing little holes or little shadows that go on, or it looks like they're standing up on each other. I think it's just the way that they move on top of each other. And as they move, one might get caught up and the other might hold it up if they're trying to pull on each other. It's an okay dress. I think it fits well. It's fine. I like the nipple piercing detail, but I just think there are more exciting Scaparelli looks that could have been chosen from that collection. Next up, we have Olivia Rodrigo wearing Valentino. Now, this is a halter style leopard motifed crystallized dress. I love it. I think the color works wonderful on her because I think that they've blended the skin tone and the actual lining of the dress really, really well. I think the leopard spots fit her amazingly. I also think the dress fits wonderfully. I mean, it just looks like it was made for her. The hem sits gorgeously. It just, this is a great dress. I think it really, really works on her. I think the Valentino seems to have honed in on the fact that if you're going to do those sort of sheer dresses with the motif, the person underneath has to really fit in to the concept and the color and the skin color that's going on up top. And I think that that's what most designers should be doing, making sure that whoever is wearing it, they are having their skin tone match with the undergarment so that it doesn't feel and it doesn't take one out of the fantasy. So I like it. It's wonderful. She looks great. Next up, we have Olivia Wilde, who is wearing Gabriella Hurst. It's pretty much a column gown with a sleeve that has asymmetrically been sort of taken on one side. There's a black leather bra underneath, and then it exposes skin and the other sort of shoulder and arm. I don't love it. I think it's a little bit blah. It's a little bit boring. It's a little bit, you know, uninteresting. It just feels sort of meh. Now, I know people are going to look at the other video and, you know, say, well, Divine Joy Randolph, she got the ability to wear a similar dress and, like, you didn't hate it. The thing is, I think that women of a certain body type don't actually get dresses that fit them well in that manner with a sort of designed element, and that's why I think that the dress looked nice. I do think Olivia Wilde comes from a body set that is not treated that similar way, so my thing is, 
it could have been more exciting. It could have been more intriguing. It could have been more fun and funky. And I know that Gabriella Hearst is a brand that's a little bit more conscious of the earth and the ecology and the environment. And I like that. And I get that. And I respect that. But at the same time, I think that it could have been a little bit more rural, a little bit more homely, because I think that those Gabriella Hearst elements are really chic and wonderful and cool and exciting. I think trying to do minimal dress with black leather bra doesn't read Gabriella Hearst to me and also just feels a little bit uninteresting. Whereas when you have those motifs, that sort of idea of fabrication that is a little bit more sort of local and things like that, instead of trying to look like every other brand that does a red carpet look, that's what makes Gabriella Hearst stand out. Not an interesting red carpet look that we could have seen from anybody and doesn't really have the stamp of Gabriella Hearst, except for the fact that maybe it's made in a little bit more of a sustainable fabric. Next up, we have Quinta Brunson wearing Dolce & Gabbana. Dolce, I will say that I do like the actual floral applique that's been put on the dress. I think it's fun. I think it's very 1960s. I think it's very flower power. Maybe it's a little 1960s, the edge of 70s in it. The draped pink fabric with the off the shoulder element only on one shoulder, I don't love, I don't get. And then the exposed black neckline situation, again, I don't get. I just think we could have done a nice dress in this floral motif and it would have been fine. Would have been great, would have been, oh, cute, flower power, wonderful, huh, 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 huh. And everybody would have been happy. But no, we try to be like, design. Don't do that, it doesn't work. You're doing too much, you're trying too hard. Just make the nice stuff and call it a day. Next up we have Rita Ora, and she's wearing wider hoofed. Rita Ora, what are you doing here? You can't not ask the question. But listen, I like Rita's look. I think that this wider hoof look is really fun. I think it's really cool. This curved corset in this cream, this ivory is lovely. The boning works, I think it's nice. And then the fact that it's kind of a bodysuit corset, but there are little rings that hold onto the actual corset. And then attached to those rings is little sort of fans of fabric that actually create a skirt. That's cool, that's fun, that's exciting. It's a great look. It sort of adds a little bit of a punky edge to it while still being incredibly beautiful, while still adding a real sort of essence and whimsical fantasy to it. That's what you want. Weiderhoft is a young brand. It's based in New York. It's up and coming. I'm pretty positive that Jackson, who's the designer, worked with Tom Brown for a time. So that's why you're getting this sort of whimsical element, this added sort of fantasy. I love it. Proud, happy Rita Ora. Thanks for coming to here, wherever you are. Thanks for coming. Next up we have Rooney Mara, and she's wearing the exact same Alexander McQueen look from the Oscars, so if you want an explanation of that, go watch the Oscars video. But what she did here was she added this little red jacket with a high-low cut over top. I love it. I don't understand what's happening, but I love it. It's almost like this woman from, what, the 1800s sort of got her, like, boyfriend's high-low military jacket and said, I'm gonna put it on. Bad times for everybody involved in that. But... Do I think that this look with the jacket over top is fun? Do I think that it adds and dichotomizes perfectly the Alexander McQueen ethos of beautiful feminine fantasy, gorgeous structured tailoring? Yeah, I do. I think that it really captures an excitement, an intrigue, a beauty, a gorgeousness, and it really pays homage to one of the greatest designers to have ever existed, at least in my opinion. I love that Rudy Mara can do no wrong. And I know people were like, Rudy Mara ruined the dress by slouching. I think it's great that she slouches. I think it's wonderful. I think it's awesome. I think that it adds to the character. Rooney Mara looks like she's always kind of like, I don't want to be here. And I'm like, I get that. I understand that. That's selling a garment. She's saying, listen, I have to go somewhere where I can explain the fact that I'm going to wear vintage Alexander McQueen and people are going to be like, what's that? She gets it, it seems, in my opinion. She understands. She's a fashion girl. We stand her. I don't need to explain. Rooney Mara. Tanny. Next up, we have Sabrina Carpenter wearing Paco Rabanne. This is pretty much a sheer top with a white draped middle ruche skirt, and there's some crystallization going on in the neckline, crystallized nipple pasty. And I hate this. I, I actually, I genuinely despise this outfit. I think that this is an awful travesty. I don't understand why Sabrina Carpenter didn't just wear a Paco Rabanne look. That was like literally straight off the runway. There were some really, really great ones that were exciting and fun. They paid homage to an amazing designer. They made beautiful noise. They were gorgeous colors. They were super cool and exciting. I don't know why this monstrosity was made. I mean, just the bodice element alone is awful. Just the way that it fits. The idea of using like the stretch 
stretch fabric that at the same time is supposed to hold up the weight of this crystal jewelry stuff. It's just, it's god awful. It's, it's horrendous. It's hideous. I don't know why they did this. You know what I mean? Like there was no need to do a custom look. And even if you were going to do a custom look, just do like cute cropped mini style Paco Rabanne vintage archive. That would be wonderful. But this... This is ugly. Next up we have Sarah Paulson wearing Nina Ricci. Now this is a look by Harris Reed, who is the new designer and creative director of Nina Ricci. We can see that it's a fully black sequin gown. It's floor length and in reality it has sort of a curvaceous sleeve. It's not the craziest dress that I've ever seen. I think there were more exciting sort of styles from Harris, from Nina Ricci that I think would have worked well. I also just don't think the fit is miraculous. I think that the sleeves are a little bit off looking. I just can see little creaks and crevices in between the sleeves that really throw off the fact that the shape of the sleeve is amazing. I think that the actual idea and the concept of the dress for Sarah Paulson works well. It's just that there are some little fit details that could have really been stronger. I think that if you're going to do a curved sleeve like that, which works, it needs to be crystal clear. It needs to be perfect. It needs to be refined. Also, the length, it's okay. The bottom of the dress just sort of concaves in on itself, which also sort of takes us out of the fantasy a little bit. I do think the bodice fits, and I think the majority of the skirt fits well. It's just that there are little finite details that need to be refined in order to really make a look that's very, very simple like this really stand out and feel... <gasps> Wow. Next up, we have Sweetie wearing Georgia's Hobika. Now, this is an intriguing look. The color is bright and vibrant over the top, and I think that, honestly, it's very Sweetie. It's made up of a cocktail sort of dress skirt element that has a wrap around sleeve situation, so it's not really a sleeve. It's like two pieces of fabric that have been wrapped sort of around the arms and the shoulders. There is a whole lot of embroidery detail that sort of moves out on the sides. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't think it's super necessary because I think that the actual shape here is really intriguing and cool and fun. I think it's different. I think that what's going on up top is wonderful. The mini skirt, I think, is very sweetie. I think it's sort of bodycon. It feels young and fresh and fun. And then a larger sort of overskirt is placed over top and then flows out in the back and creates sort of like a train. It's not my favorite sweetie look ever, but I do think that it fits her aesthetic. I do think that it fits her vibe. I think between the color and the cut, it really makes sense for her. And I think that to a degree, that sort of wrap around cut of the top really is a little bit fashion forward for her. I don't mind this. Next up we have Shawn Mendes wearing Dolce and Gabbana. I like it, it's, it's nice. I think the sheer shirt underneath is good, it works. The double breasted sort of style jacket is okay. The pants fit well, the shoes are whatever. I like the shirt underneath for Shawn. I think it's cool, I think it makes sense, I think it's fun and young and interesting. We'll take it. Next up we have Simone Ashley wearing Nina Ricci by Harris Reed as well. This is another look from I think the most recent collection. It's an asymmetrical light blue sequin style with big bows that flow out from the shoulder area and the hip area. It's ruched down the side in the waist section but again I think it just kind of falls flat. Harris Reed is known for excitement and intrigue and interest and color and pop and vibrance and sensation. And this feels again like something that anybody could kind of do and it, it doesn't read as the excitement and the intrigue. I want more archival references from Harris. I think Nina Ricci has a rich history that could most definitely be tapped into. There are cool architectural sort of silhouettes and styles that he could develop and also reference that would be cool and exciting. I just think that this again, especially for the Vanity Fair, falls very very flat and blah and not memorable. Next up we have Sofia Carson wearing Valentino. This is an off the shoulder beige look and it is a tiered striped style that is ruffle and then I believe this sort of beige sequin and then crystals and then ruffle sequin crystal, ruffle sequin crystal, etc, etc. I kind of like it. I think that it feels very Valentino. I think the color choice of this beige is also interesting. I think it's a little bit muted a little bit, drained. There's something about it that's intriguing to me. I'm not obsessed with it, but I think that the texture, I think the stripes, I think it feels a little bit retro Valentino in a way that you don't really see all that much. It has a little bit of a 70s feel, and I think Sophia Carson really took like a risk wearing it. And I personally, personally, the risk paid off for me. I know a lot of people probably aren't going to like this dress, and that's fine. Don't like it, I guess. Put your whatever to the test. I think that it looks a little vintage Valentino for me, and I'm okay with that. Next up, we have Sophie Turner wearing custom Louis Vuitton. Now, this is a black opaque sort of cocktail dress cut but in reality it's a full dress and there is a sheer element that wraps around the shoulders and the collarbone and then 
from the sort of mid thigh falls down and it's fully and crystallized. I like it. I feel like it gives sort of Sophie Turner a Morticia E. Adams but young kind of feeling to it. I love the opaque cut of that little black dress, but then the fact that it really is a sheer style that flows down and hits the floor. It's wonderful. I think the cape is gorgeous and different. I think it's a nice custom LV look. It's not trying to do too, too much. It's doing just enough for me to be happy with it. I'm into it. Next up, we have Stephanie Sue, and she is wearing Rice of Vanessa. I don't love it. It's some sort of crystal motif, sort of square cocktail dress. The scallop bottom is fine, but I just think that it falls flat. You know, I think she had a good Oscars look. I think it was nice, but I just think for the Vanity Fair, she should have let loose a little bit more. She should have been a little bit more exciting and fun and young and cool. Maybe pick a cool young designer that would really probably want to dress, you know, an Oscar nominee. I think that's the way to go for it but I think that this just feels a little bit press tour. It doesn't read exciting, memorable, or fun. I think it reads, you know, she probably was in a big dress or she wants something cocktail -y. but I think that there are cool young designers that could have done something that's a little bit more exciting for her. Next up we have Thames in Minot. Now this is a black corset, strapless with a sarong sort of skirt with big high tall slit. I think it's okay. It's not really super duper memorable, not really super duper exciting. I think it fits well. I think it accomplishes what it's trying to do, which is, you know, make her look gorgeous and wonderful. Again, kind of blah. I will say the look that she wore to the actual Oscars, we will discuss, I promise. It's just, you know, for the Vanity Fair, it could have also been a little bit exciting. Next up, we have Tessa Thompson wearing Moschino. She is wearing a rose bra style in red, which I actually kind of like. I think it's fun. And then what looks to be like a deconstructed frock coat with a double breasted element that asymmetrically sort of wraps out and exposes part of the stomach, shoulders, the bust area, all that. Has matching gloves, a mermaid skirt. I think it's okay. It's not my favorite Tessa Thompson look. You know, I think it's different for her. I think it's a little bit more radical, a little bit more skin showy. But Tessa's usually very high concept to me. She's a little bit intellectual, a little avant-garde. And I miss that. I think that this feels a little blah. Uninteresting, a little I'm going to show skin. But like not in a way that feels Tessa thompson -y. Usually it's just very heightened. And this feels sort of low end. We then had Tayana Taylor wearing Vivian Westwood. It is a sheer top, a sheer black jacket, a pair of pinstripe pants, and a whole lot of body jewelry. There's like a sort of wire gold bra, plunging pearls with the Westwood orb and cross in it. Listen, I don't hate it. I'm not super duper mad about it. I think it's intriguing. It's a little lens wary. The pinstripes are good. Very deconstructed Andreas Kronthaler, Vivian Westwood kind of era, which you don't really see all that much of on the red carpet. You usually see like the big voluminous Vivian Westwood sort of gowns that we all know and that we all love. But I think this fits with Tiana Taylor's sort of vibe. She is a little bit more masculine in terms of dressing a lot of the time. And I think this feels fun and light and frisky, but it still has that sort of jeweled edge, which is going on underneath. Next up, we have Tracy Ellis Ross wearing Balmain. I love this because Tracy said, listen, I'm going to wear a hat. And I love that. It's very rare you get a headpiece. It's very rare you get somebody really dedicated to the experience. It feels sort of old school 1950s hat. And I love this sort of little mini cape style that's attached to this sort of sarongi skirt with flared pants and the gloves. I love it. You only need the two colors to really be exciting and different and fun. The shape of the hat and the shape of the cape really work well off of each other. And then the black just sort of slims everything down, lets those two pieces really take control. Tracy Ellis Ross always goes for it. And here I think she delivered once again. Next up, we have Valentina Pino and Selma Hayek. Now listen, Valentina, I love this look. It's very Gucci, Alessandra Michele, this flowy, ruffly pink. I love it. It's easy, it's sweet, it's cute. She looks great, I'm happy for it. For Selma Hayek, it's a little lace strap number that flows into a big Swarovski crystal and a little bit of a black lace slit pipe. It's okay. I like the cut of it. I think it fits her really, really well. I think it feels very sort of Gucci-esque. I'm not mad about it. I like both of them. It's clean, classic. I'm fine. Next up, we have Yara Shahidi wearing Bottega Veneta. This is a strapless style, I believe, in like a cream sort of cotton or linen-y. And then over top of it is a red cut-out leather dress situation with matching red cutout gloves. And what really it is is these sort of fabric flowers look like they've been laser cut out of the dress, but they haven't been sort of 
fully taken out so they sort of hang off of the dress which is amazing and then there's red leather floral appliques that are attached over top as well so it looks like a big bouquet of flowers is flying out of the dress and it's emphasized by the fact that you have that clean sort of beigey color underneath that which exposes the dress and the fact that there are these cut out elements and wearing the matching gloves is fantastic it's wonderful it's necessary it's needed the shoes could have been different I don't really love the shoes there but like that dress in and of itself and the matching gloves shout out to Yara Shahidi because looks great. Next up we have Ziwei who is wearing the blondes. I love this. I think it's fun. I think it's frisky. I believe that this is like a green bolero velvet style with a big gorgeous crystal in the center of this green matching bralette and then there is a big crystal it looks like an emerald of some sort on this sarong skirt as well I like the fact that Ziwei went for it she's a big beautiful emerald I'm into the vibe I think matching this big emerald crystal style with a very rich and luxurious velvet green works I think it's fun I like the bolero and bralette I think this wrong skirt plays second fiddle, but I don't think that's an issue here. I think matching the shoes to a degree, there's silver in the crystals, there's silver on the shoes. Like I'm okay with it. I do love the choice. And last but not least, we have Zoe Saldana wearing Michael Kors. She is wearing a very sheer, what looks like a chainmail top with zippers that run from the neckline down to the hem of this little chainmail style. I think it's cool. I think it's different. I don't think it's something that we see all that much. And then a high-waisted black skirt sort of tops it all off. Listen, I like the chainmail top. It feels a little bit different for Michael Kors, a little bit more radical. I'm happy for a radical Michael Kors moment. So that is the end of this video. Let's talk about our best and worst. Honestly, I'm gonna have to give best to Megan Fox looks fantastic. Michaela J. Rodriguez. Versace was great. Olivia Rodrigo, shocker, I know. There's some shockers going on here. Rita Ora, I know, I know. Sophie Turner, I really like that look. I thought it was cute. As for worst, I'm gonna put Kylie and Kendall because it's just too blase for them. Stephanie Sue, that was tough. Olivia Wilde, also pretty bad. And I think we're good. Please let me know what you guys thought of all of these looks from the Oscars Vanity Fair after party. Love to know your thoughts. I will see you guys in the next video. And TTYL.